So here's what's funny. I'm trying to go into my scripture and my iPad is totally on E. But I brought a backup in the outside pocket. Can you hand me my phone? Now, I know I charged it. But apparently, I guess the enemy's just desperate to do anything to keep the word from. But I keep my notes in more than one place. So just in case he hits one thing, I got a backup plan. So even if you mess with my peace, I still got my joy. It's on the outside. You got it? Oh, there it is. Now this song right here, I've just heard this for the first time and I already want it on my iPod and it's blessing me and I need it in my life. Now, if you all could see what God can see about you, your worship would change. Now, I, don't, I can't make this up. Now, now my phone is actually broken. I'm not lying. This, is, this has never happened. But because I know the word in my heart. This is so weird. Let me tell you why. Because I was going in one direction with the word and the Holy Ghost said right before service, I need you to shift. Because that's what happens in revival. You've got to go with the flow of the Holy Ghost. Now all of my electronic devices are under attack. Why? Well, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he stops stuff over the airways, but it's cool. Go to 1 Samuel 16. Take this. I don't need it. I feel the Holy Ghost. 1 Samuel 16. You done messed with the wrong one. Notice where I look. Never look a devil in the eye. Because when you look him in the eye, you've already elevated him. You want to talk to a devil, write a note on the bottom of your shoe because he is under your feet. And I know we have another experience soon to come and I do want to jump right into the word, but I want to pray first. Because I knew that God wanted to do something, not just for you, but I knew for me and my family. There are family miracles that are in this church this morning and across all of the campuses and those who are watching online. If you only want for yourself, you're missing the blessing and the beauty of what can take place. Because some folk in your family are about to get free because you're here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will, right now, speak through your word to your people for your glory. And I thank you that because of who you are, nothing that happens, nothing that the enemy tries will be successful in any of our lives. You've already spoken the word, so the word cannot be stopped. God, this is the first time that the stuff that I tried to do didn't work in the middle of a preaching moment. But because this word is in my heart, I believe it's the word for the house. Hallelujah. So that must be why there's opposition because the enemy only opposes that which you've declared. So now prove who's got all the power and break through in this place. In the name of the only one that matters, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the prophesied and true Messiah, He who was declared from the beginning, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This Jesus prophesied over 1,500 years, over 40 different writers, all pointing to one man. He is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, and He is right now seated at the right hand to that King we give all glory, honor, dominion, and power in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare amen, amen, and amen. Somebody give God a great praise. You may be seated. 
I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful for this moment in the word and to all of the families of this great church across all the campuses. A great good morning and God bless you. We also want to acknowledge and give honor to all of our police officers, firefighters, first responders, especially on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. We want to thank God for anyone and everyone who has laid their lives on the line to protect us all. We thank God for you and your families. And if by chance there's someone who lost a loved one or was impacted by 9-11, we give all of our prayers to you and our love to you and our support to you. And we thank you for the sacrifice of your family members on that fateful day. But God will restore your joy and your peace and he will give you comfort through your pain. May the Lord protect every police officer and firefighter and every military person that's represented in this church. Stephen Furtick is my friend, and he is a man of God. And this church is a problem for the devil. But I'm trying to figure out where he came from. You know, some people have just a legacy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just know, like, oh, yeah, he gonna blow up. You know, I don't know Bill Gates' son, but I got a feeling he's not going to have any financial problems. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? There are just certain people. If your last name is Zuckerberg and your dad works at Facebook, you straight. <laughs> There's a legacy in place. But nobody could tell me that they knew that a kid from Monk's Corner I think the reason why the, the miracle of Elevation Church speaks to my heart so much is because I always love an underdog story. It's one thing when you got the power and you got the swag and you got the, the money and you have the facilities. It's another when you were just off in the cut serving God and he whispers a word and you just obedient and you just trust him and you just stay behind him and he just opens up another door and he opens up another door and he opens up another campus 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 then he opens up another country. And all of a sudden, in the most racially divisive time in our country since the 1960s, I'm looking at a homogenized church in the South, in North Carolina, and you're telling me this is not a miracle, and you want me to be casual at 9.30 on September 11th? You want me not to praise God? You want me to be regular and casual? No! This is a miracle! This is what revival looks like. The reason why I thank God for your pastor and for this church is because it gives guys like me hope to keep on pushing, to keep on preaching. See, I didn't have the legacy. I didn't come from a long list of well-known pastors and leaders. I didn't have a trust fund. We trusted God for our funds. Am I talking to anybody in here, any single mothers in here, any parents in here who have to fight to make ends meet? Anybody got to stretch that money till Thursday when that direct deposit hit? You understand what I'm saying? Talk about cold orange when that orange light is on your gas tank and it's so low, you start praying in tongues while you're driving. You turn off air conditioning, turn the radio down. Everybody be quiet, be quiet. Don't say nothing, shut your mouth. We ain't got no gas. <laughs> like the radio gonna take your gas. I love an underdog story. You're going to tape the whole thing with your phone. You just, 
They got millions of dollars of cameras. You just gonna have me on your Samsung. Like, I'm gonna get that path. I'm gonna make it hard on you. You ain't gonna find me. You just gonna take me because you want to. I'm gonna. So, for all the ladies with braids, if you white, ask a black woman. She knows exactly what this means. She just got her hair done, but it's itching, but she can't scratch it. She got the padded. She got the, she got the padded. Woo. I love an underdog story. My mom and dad divorced when I was very young. My father was not a significant part of my life, but my mother kept me in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Parents, don't make church optional for your kids. If they're in your house, get them up. Bring them to this church. But sometimes they talk back. I wish something in my house would talk back to me when I'm paying bills and feeding them. You better get up and get to church. You either going alive or in a coffin. It's your choice, but you going to church because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm not supposed to be here that's probably why I keep looking around because I know where I came from. All the metrics and statistics would say that I should be dead in jail. Really no hope for a future. I should not be a husband uh, or a present father in the lives of my children. None of the men in my family have ever been successful uh, in their marriages. And so I don't come from the lineage of success. But I'm so glad that my earthly lineage is not the final chapter of my story because when I gave my life to Jesus at seven years old, God interrupted my story. I love an underdog, Monk's Corner. Never heard of it, but you heard of it now. I want to talk to anybody who's ever felt like you were overlooked, marginalized, undervalued. Perhaps the gifts that you have have been missed by people who didn't see the true value of who you were. You've been hidden. And guess what? That's exactly where God creates leaders. See, Code Orange is not so much uh, a revival exclusively as much as it's an announcement of a generation. God is announcing people across multiple campuses and those who are connected. It, this church literally speaks to those who have been disillusioned by religion as usual and church as usual. People who are hungry for a move of God, a touch of God, a real authentic encounter with Jesus, an experience that they can tangibly feel but cannot physically express. There's just something about this atmosphere. I can't even put my, my finger on it, but I know Jesus is here. I know where, I may not know all of where God is, but I know where God is not. And I've been in places where God is not enough to know where God is. He's here. It's working. Now, now you are, you scared me because I didn't know what was going on. You just rolled up on a brother. <laughs> and I was like, hold on. Come on, I got 1%. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, brother. I want to talk to anybody who's ever felt like what God placed in you was hidden, devalued. This revival is for you because God is getting ready to do what Romans 8, 18, and 19 says, for I consider 
that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits the revealing or the unveiling or the ta-da, the pulling back of the curtain on the sons and daughters of God. God is about to pull the curtain back on the gifts and the hidden talents and the treasure that's been inside that he's been building and establishing in you through the process of pain, through the process of tears, through the process of prayer. This is that moment, but you had to be hidden because God needed to make sure your character matched your calling. I need a four second praise break in here. Your character has to match your calling. Monk's Corner, bro. There's another guy that came out of nowhere that God used and just kind of turned things upside down. 1 Samuel 16 and 11. Then Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Jesse said, well, I mean, yeah, they're here. Oh, well, there remains yet the youngest. He's out there keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send him, get him, for we will not sit down until he comes. Nothing's moving until the one God chose gets in position. Some of y'all don't even know it, but there are some things that are stagnant waiting on you to arrive. I don't know if it's because you guys are really smart because at 930 in the morning, you got to love Jesus to be in church. And all of y'all got all y'all advanced degrees and something like, that's really good. That's didactic. I like that. That's very, that's very vociferous of you. I'm getting ready to preach. I need y'all to preach. This ain't no lecture. I need somebody to holler back at your boy. What I just said was there are, there are ideas, there are businesses, there are opportunities, there are positions at companies that cannot be filled and they have tried to fill the position and it just doesn't work until you show up. You are the key to an entire system being successful. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was good looking. And the Lord said to Samuel, arise, anoint him, for this is he. 13th verse. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. I want to preach for the few minutes that I have about this kid that came out of nowhere and nobody knew who he was. And you do want to talk about revival. The, the, the beautiful thing about revival is you don't know which way it's coming from. You don't know how God's going to move. He does things suddenly. And I love how God just turns things upside down and turns up patriarchal society and what you expect. And he just does something all out the cut. And then all of a sudden, here in Bethlehem, that's a familiar name. Somebody else was born in Bethlehem. They were looking for a king in Bethlehem. A prophetic declaration of a king that was going to be born in Bethlehem. Samuel shows up. Saul was a mess. God said, go anoint somebody I already chose him. Here's what's crazy. God chose him before people chose Saul. But God will always let people get theirs in first. So God allowed Saul to go first because in order for David to become David, he needed Saul. Stop despising Saul. You need Saul. You need people to hate on you. You need the people to tear you up. You need people to attack. It's the necessary ingredient to keep you humble and in the presence of God and it keeps you pliable in the hands of the master. Stop hating Saul. Thank God for Saul because if you got a Saul, that makes you David. I need somebody to worship in here. Samuel shows up 
at Jesse's house. Jesse's like, hey, sons, <laughs> one of y'all about to be the king. Ah, 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 ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hurry up, line up, line up. Here comes the prophet. And Samuel was a real prophet. He wasn't one of them regular prophets. He wasn't one of them weird TV prophets that you see at three in the morning. Be like, I'm going to tell you right now, I feel something in my spirit. I feel right now somebody's got arthritis in their left kneecap. I tell you, if you pour some water on your kneecap, God's going to heal you right now. Call that number your screen and you're going to burn in a hot lake of fire. <laughs> now the Bible says when Samuel prophesied, folk trembled. Not one word that he spoke fell to the ground. God backed him up with the power of heaven. He showed up at the house with some oil in his hand and a word on his heart. He sees Eliab, the firstborn, handsome boy, double portion boy, big time, Jesse's big dog. As soon as Samuel sees him, Samuel's like, in his heart, the Bible says Samuel's like, that's the one. God was like, hey, I want to teach you something too, prophet. Because man looks at the outside. That's why you've been overlooked because you didn't, you don't have all the 65 degrees and you didn't come from the family with money. And so people think they know all there is to know about you, but they don't know what God has been seeding on the inside of you. They don't know the dreams God's been giving you in hidden places. No one has a clue that you've been writing in your journal. You've been putting notes in your phone. You've been believing God for something so crazy. You couldn't even tell your family members because they would have talked you out of believing God for it. Oh, they think they know you, but they don't really know you. And if you don't know, now you know. The first lesson is that the prophet was fooled by the external. Why is that important? Because some of y'all have been hurt by leaders in other places and people in position who didn't see you. Don't get upset. They didn't see you because they couldn't see you. It wasn't intentional. God hid you even to them because he doesn't want you needing validation from outside sources. He needs you to be secure in who he created you to be. And if nobody tells you you've got a calling, you know it because God has declared it in your spirit. You don't need a name tag to serve. If they never give you an award at the banquet at the end of the year, can you still be in that parking lot with that little orange vest with a smile on your face saying, this way, welcome to Elevation, this way. Could you still pass buckets if no one knew your name? Could you still sweep floors if no one knew your name? Because that's the ones that God is raising up, not the ones that need to be validated in front of the crowd. God is looking for folk that will serve when no one is looking, because if you can serve when no one is looking, he will give you favor when everyone's looking. I need a 10 second praise break in here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. No, I need a high five. I need a high five. Ah. Even the prophet thought Eliab was the one, but he wasn't. God said, I've refused him. God was like, ugh, not you, ugh. I don't like your spirit, ugh. He got to the next son, number two. Nope. Number three, not I. Number four, nine. Number five, mm -mm. Number six. Number seven, didn't I say no? <laughs> now the prophet is confused. So now I know you told me that there was a king in this house. So then you get to 1 Samuel 16, 11, and Samuel he said, well, are all the young men here? Jesse's responsible, yeah, they are. I mean, the ones I would choose. All 
the ones that I'm proud of are here. Some of y'all have been marginalized by family because of the circumstances. Ah, but there are no illegitimate children. There are only illegitimate circumstances. There are no accidental lives. You can't sneak into the earth. You have to be spoken into the earth. And if you're here, you have a purpose. Whether your father was in your life or not, whether your mother planned you or not, whether people wanted you here or not, you are here because God wanted you. You have purpose. Seven sons. Seven is the number of completion, and it was a complete no. Jesse said, well, I mean, I got one more. You don't want him. He, he out there in the field. Unbeknownst to him, there was a kid in the field just sitting out there with the sheep. Just out there, just bad. He was artsy kind of to himself because his brothers didn't like him. He was the run of the family, had a different mom. Conceived in sin is what he said. Shaping in iniquity. This is in sin. My mother conceived me. This is what David wrote. He was out there in the field by himself. Everybody else in the house. He just out there writing songs. You can always tell the sound of revival because there is a, a theme of brokenness and passion and humility and hunger. That's why I love the sound of this house because I hear a sound that speaks to my soul. It's not a sound of pride, like I'm so good and look at my talent. It's a sound that says, God, if, it, if you don't show up, I don't have anything. God, if you don't make a way, I'm going to be lost. God, if you don't speak into my marriage, I'm not going to make it. God, if you don't show up, I don't have enough money. God! David was out in the field, staying obedient, and all of a sudden, his father calls from the house, David, sir, come in. Somebody here needs to see you. I'm sure when he sees you, he's going to realize he made a mistake, but just come on. The title of my sermon for the 10 minutes I got left is I am number eight. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So number eight is sitting in the field. He was so overlooked that his own father didn't even invite him in to be a possibility. But what is hidden from men is revealed by God. This is what is the power of Elevation Church because y'all been in existence 10 years, but where were you 10 years ago? Stephen, Furtick, you can't go anywhere in the body of Christ in the world where they don't know who he is. Where was he 10 years ago? God's blessed me. People know who I am. I'm at the restaurant. I'm chilling. I'm at Applebee's. I'm, let me get some riblets. They was like, Pastor John, I heard your sermon. I heard you trying to eat right. Don't you want, won't you want some fat-free? No, I don't want no fat-free dressing. Stop looking at my sermons online. How you even know who I am? But 10 years ago, nobody knew who I was. Here's what's crazy. I was then who I am now. I'm getting ready to go somewhere. You know him now, but he was then who he is now. Because who you are at your core, that's your foundation. What people come to know is God's revelation. He didn't, be, he didn't get anointed today. He's been anointed. Don't start. Oh, Lord. Oh. See, people don't know how to take you yet because they know there's something on you, which is why some people really are drawn to you and others just can't stand you. 
the ones that can't stand you is because they can't control you. People don't like what they cannot control. All you do is go to work and you nice to everybody. And then women at the job, I just, I'm some, I can't, I don't like her. It's just, mm. I don't like her. Why? I don't know. It's just something. Something is the name of the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost's other name. Because you got the Spirit of God on you. People want to be catty. They smile in your face, but they, they're trying to figure out what is that thing in there? I can't break her. Every time something bad happens, she's like, well, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Because you've got something on the inside that says I've been out in the field where nobody knew where I was. I was worshiping in the dark. I was praying in the dark. I don't just go to church on the weekends, baby. I talk to God on Thursday night and Tuesday morning and Monday afternoon. And sometimes I close the door to my cubicle and I... Every now and then, I gotta give God some praise. Because when you're a number eight, it doesn't matter where you are. You gotta give him. Somebody say, I am number eight. I came to announce number eight during this cold orange revival that which has been hidden overlooked marginalized undervalued spoken against God is about to elevate promote launch and lift this is the season of number eight the thing that's been hidden in you is about to be revealed you're getting ready to go from anonymous to necessary overnight you're getting ready to go from what's your name again to we've been expecting you. Oh, I'm talking to somebody that needs to be encouraged. Anonymity was not God's displeasure. It was his development. Samuel says, stay right there. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Stay right there. Samuel said, sin for him. For we will not sit down until he comes. What Samuel did is conferred honor on a kid who by the very culture he was in would not have even been considered for leadership. He was last on the totem pole. But when you're in the presence of authority, you rise. David started walking towards the house, dirty from being in the field running after sheep that didn't even belong to him. With the dust of the field and the sweat of service on his face and body, he walks into the house. He sees a man he's never seen with a jar in his hand. He says, you called me dad? Bible says, God said to Samuel, him, the one with the dirt on his face. Him who stinks from acts of service. Him, the ones that the brothers hated on him, anoint him. Well, most high, shouldn't, shouldn't he change first? No, anoint him while he's dirty. Some of y'all missed that. You think God is waiting for you to get clean to anoint you. He's going to show his love that he's going to pour oil in the middle of your, in the middle of your situation. He's going to say, I know what you're struggling with. I know what you're going through. I still anointed you. I still got a purpose because God doesn't anoint finished works. He anoints you so you can finish the work. If you could do it without him, you wouldn't need him. But he's anointed you. Number eights get anointed while they're still dirty. So you've got the anointing and the dust. That's what makes you relevant to culture. 
because you're anointed of God, but you still have dust that people can connect to and say, even though God's got his hand on that lady and I see God doing great things, I still feel like I can connect to her. I feel like I can connect to him. This is not the season for people who think they can look down on other people like you so good and they're so bad. No, God is anointing people who can say, I've been where you've been. I've cried where you've cried. I ain't always been anointed. Let me show you my scars. Let me show you my flaws. Let me show you where I failed so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. Somebody say, I am number eight. I am number eight. Overlooked, undervalued, marginalized, hidden in a field. And as he was walking from the field to the house, he had no clue that it was the last time he would walk without being anointed king. You walked to the, from the parking lot to the church, had no clue heaven was watching you walk. I'm talking to somebody, you closed the door, angels were at attention like secret service, making sure you got to your seat. Wherever you are, that's your assigned seat. Even if you're watching online at home, it's your assigned seat. If you walk from your bed to your computer, it's an assigned seat because this is an announcement today that it's time for the anointed to arise, for the ones that have been hidden to rise up. It is time for the number eight to take their rightful place. And this is the power of King David. David was known as a warrior, a worshiper, and a winner. Are there any warriors in here who know how to warfare in the spirit? Your worship is your warfare. Number eights were made to worship, made to war, and made to win. any number eights in the church number eights are made to worship made for warfare and made to win but here's the key your worship is your warfare God is raising up people who have had to fight through tears and fight through pain and fight through questions You've lifted your hands and you didn't even know if God heard your prayer, but because something in you says, even if you don't answer, I still acknowledge you as God. There's power in that worship. And this is the power of David. And this is the power of a number eight. That when he was anointed in that house, he didn't become king for many years. But here's what's deep. The moment he got anointed, I believe in my spirit. As soon as he got finished, he said, Wow. Daddy, can I ask a question? She said, yes, son. Can I go back outside now? Because his position did not change his posture. I might be anointed king, but right now I'm still a shepherd and I got a job to do. Can you stay humble and keep serving and keep believing and keep honoring other people because your time is coming. In fact, your time is now. So when you get your anointing and people finally realize who you are, don't change. Don't change. Don't be like, I told you I was anointed. I told you. No, no, no. Just say, I'm going back out in the field to serve. In your spirit, I will.